I'm not so worried about the edges because at the very end what we're going to do is we're going to take a sharp knife and go in and redefine those edges. Get our shape the way we want it to be. I sometimes sculpt little landscapes or dioramas. Sometimes, yeah. Um, I do some sort of base uh, with every character that I make to kind of help tell the story or help bring it to life. The shaman piece we just finished up uh, had some landscape going on there. Okay, so now <clears throat> I want this part that's on the side of the head to kind of flare outwards. So we could take this clay and flare it outwards like this, but then it becomes really hard to sculpt because now it's this flimsy piece of clay. So what you do instead is you just add on top of that. So that way there's an understructure supporting it while you're sculpting it. And then we, we can get the shape we want on the outside. Then we can carve underneath and remove the material to get the shape on the outside or the inside correct. It's getting us in the right position there. Do it on the other side. Now, in the beginning, when you're especially when you make a helmet or any sort of piece of armor, the first step is this. It's always to get the overall shape looking good and then then we can break it down and do like uh, details you know adding little rivets and uh, making little areas have like engravings or whatever however you want to design it most important thing is to get the shape that you want first kind of have one of those going on in the back let's get our knife out
Okay, I think I'm going to round the edge at the top here. Like this. Get a nice, nice bucket helmet. Okay, so now I'm happy with our shape. Now let's clean the edges back up here. Taking a sharp exacto knife. I'm just gonna go in. look like a tuft of hair we probably could have kept that there got a little bit of soft clay that wants to stick around there so we're just gonna try and remove it come up in the back where the neck is and kind of round out there a little bit so we can actually bend his head almost like a football helmet Now this is the part where it gets fun because now we can add on any uh, details, any texturing, stuff like that. I 
Let's see, how do we want to do this? Let's do a little bit of a trim around the edge here. We do that with some rivets. It should look pretty nice. I don't want. Obviously, this isn't. This isn't like a really elaborate kind of character. So we don't want his helmet to be too fancy. Oh, we want this to look like a. We want this to look like a like a hammered out piece of metal. So I'm gonna show you a technique for making that pretty convincing. Especially uh, for the painting phase. Creating a nice dark seam line there.
Okay. I'm kind of contemplating in my head if we should add something like a strike going up the middle. I think we might. I think we just might do that. So just like uh, let's take some of our firmer clay here. Create something going up the middle there. Just like a protruding piece of metal. Yeah, set that down. Now to make life a lot easier, we can use a pasta machine to roll out a nice, evenly, uh, even thickness piece of clay. So let's do that. Doesn't need to be too thick. Let's start with on size four. That should be good. All right, should be long enough to. So all we need from the pasta machine for now. Let's take this on the table. And we're gonna cut a strip. Now usually I lock my wrist and my elbow and I pull my whole body backwards like this. And that helps you get a nice straight line both times. Let's put this like that. Once we got it in the right position, we'll kind of push it down. Uh, Naruto is in the painting f stage, um, but we have to make a second character for that piece. We'll be working on it on Tuesday and Wednesday next week. To tune in then to see what's what the progress is looking like. There we go. Uh, I think I think we are gonna leave a little bit of a nose guard here. Okay, now now's the stage where I'm gonna add some like rivets and stuff like that. But before we do that, let's do tech. I think it's easier to texture before we add any little bits of clay and pieces, do our overall texturing first. And that way we don't have to dodge and move around all those little pieces. We can be a little bit more reckless. So there's two, there's two things I like to use to create a convincing metal texture, especially Especially something that's supposed to look medieval fantasy looking. Uh, that's taking blunt flat tools like this and creating these little, little like hammer marks. So let's do that first. I guess, I guess there's three, there's three uh, different techniques we could use. So we're just going to take this and just kind of go over the whole surface and you can see you can see that uh, hammered look building up there you can use more or less of this the more of this you use the more rough it looks you know and the less you use the more refined 
something will look. I'm always more fan. Of, I'm, I'm always a fan of more texture. Just gives you so much more to work with when you're painting, in my opinion. Alright, first layer done. Next, we're going to take more. <laughs> Next, we're going to take uh, these ball styluses. And we're going to use two different sizes. The lar a larger one and not the, not the smallest because we don't want to create too uh, sharp of dots, but we want to make smaller dots too. So, so let's start with the larger one. And I like to think of this as like if you look at metal that is corroding or kind of uh, really old, it, it develops these kind of like pores or, or, or um, yeah, like pores or corrosion in, in the areas where essentially you want to think of like if water was to dump, be dumped on this, where the water would settle. So, so you know, like usually where pieces of metal meet up, uh, you'll see a lot of this like Bach marks. So we're just going to start with the big one first. And just, yeah, look, pretty much areas you want to bring out because these areas, you got to think when you're painting, these areas will become darker if you use any washes, which I definitely use washes. These areas will become darker. see that pits there we go pitting there we go that's the word I was looking for thank you and we do use the smaller one in these harder to reach areas this just gives us a variety of different uh, textures going on and allow yourself to be really random with these steps you don't want to you're not trying to control it. Controlling it to a certain level, but not too uh, crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Up at the top here. random ones all over. Alright, let's do the other side.
All right. Next step is to do any scratches or dings into the helmet. Now, another texture you'll see going on on metal is like micro scratches all over the place going in different directions. The key here is to make them straight. Most of the time the scratches on metal and stuff aren't like curved, uh, ends up starting to look like something else. So you just want to take a tool. I usually like using this wood tool because I'm, I'm gonna hold it like this very lightly, not super firmly, I'm gonna lightly hold it and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna simulate uh, those scratches as if it was actually damaged through use. Come at, come at it from all kinds of different directions. And again, we're just kind of a little bit controlled randomness. A lot of these won't show up until we paint, but... This is the part where you want to think about how how uh, this helmet would actually get damaged, you know? Usually it's the edges. You just kind of focus from the edges and strike the different edges from different directions. That's right. Swinging a mini sword, exactly. You are the one dealing the damage. Now, there's all kinds of different ways you can do these things. Another a good another good way to do this is if you want a, a more controlled approach. Uh, do the helmet without doing scratches, then bake it, and then go back in with like an X-Acto knife and do the same thing. You're just going to be attacking it as if you're the, the sword wielder attacking him. So now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to create some more sp specific looks or scratches or dents. I always like putting one of these little X scratches, those iconic looking uh, where the two scratches collide look. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> don't, don't, kill, don't kill your character. Not yet. There we go. Let's take, let's take our little uh, ball stylus here again, and we're going to create some real like, deeper little dents there. That's part of the story building too, you know, like you're asking yourself in your, in your mind, like, okay, what, what attacked this guy, you know, like, what made these dents and these scratches? And it can really help you come up with some good ideas to make a pretty original character, you know? That's right. Yeah. So like, yeah, if you have a character that does have a scar on his face or his eye, you could think about including that into the helmet. Exactly. So we had, here's the thing about doing, when I'm doing sculpture or when I'm designing something, 
there's certain decisions you make along the way and you have to let those earlier decisions guide your future decisions so yeah like it so like this would be a perfect example that I decided not to put any scars on his face his face is, is finished so I mean I could go back and like carve it and re-sculpt and add the scar if I really wanted to but here's I already made that decision and I'm moving on uh, to the fact that there there's no scar on his face so but if there was then you made that decision and now you're gonna add it to the helmet you know so it just kind of like builds off builds off of itself it's the same thing so like normally I would have a normally I would have um, a body to this character and the body would d dictate a lot of what the head will look like. But since we're starting with the head, it's going to be reversed. Where the we're going to shape the body around the head we've made. Mm-hmm. That's when your your own designs and your characters will start to kind of develop themselves in, in a way, you know, if you're just focusing on the small decisions in front of you. you end up with something pretty cool by the time you get done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and in, in my opinion, some of the best uh, ideas you'll have for a project are not when you're sitting there thinking about the project, but when you're actually uh, doing it, because there's a lot of time in between each step, you know, and, and during that time you're kind of working on it and you're sitting there and you're thinking about the character or the, the project as a whole. Just kind of clean, cleaning this up a little bit here. Looked a little bit messy. Okay, so I think I want. So I'm thinking about how this character's helmet is actually attached itself to his head, some sort of a chin strap. I think I think we might go grab some chain I have from my boxes and have some sort of a chin strap or something going into his beard that is using chain. We could easily do like some sort of leather straps or something coming down here, but I think we'll probably do chain. Keep it really like rough, really rough and rugged looking to match the helmet. But before we do that, the next and probably the last step on the helmet here is we're going to make a bunch of, well not a bunch, but rivets in certain areas to kind of make like it look like it's all held together somehow. So. Let's do, uh, now the way I do rivets is I take a firmer clay, so this is the Kickstarter cast clay, and you want to roll out a snake of clay that is consistent in thickness, you know, it's about the same thickness all the way through, and that thickness will determine the size of your rivet. This, this is what I find to be the best way to create a bunch of same or similar to same size pieces you know because if you try to grab a little piece of clay and sometimes I do do that and it's just it can be pretty annoying trying to get the same size so it's best best to do it this way and we take a tool like this and we're gonna just cut there we go size of clay like that we're gonna set it down just gonna try to cut consistent size pieces here. That's too big. Should be enough. 
And we just stick it to the end of your finger, roll it into a ball, and then stick it again and place it. What's up, Major? What's up, Southern Kid Rock? How you guys doing? Looks very medieval. That's what we're going for. This character will really come to life when we add the beard. See, like right now, I was just working on it, going up, doing these rivets, and I just thought in my mind, I was like, hmm, wouldn't it be nice if there was something in the middle here? Some sort of maybe spike or just something funny. There's there's an opportunity there. We can decide to play around with that or we can not. I think we will. I think we'll uh, see how it looks. Whenever you have those ideas, just take a little piece of clay, you know, and just push, put something there. And then you can really see if it's working or not, if it's a good idea. And, uh... Yeah. Doesn't have to be the finished product, just something to see if it works. What's up, Professor Pi? Good to see you, man. Yeah, I think we'll keep. I think we'll keep it. Let's put it. Let's put a little, just a little metal spike there. Anybody coming in today? Today's a special tutorial day. We do the last Sunday of every month. I'm doing a tutorial stream where I'm demonstrating something specific and being a lot more, I guess, vocal with my thought process and what I'm doing. So welcome. Come on in. Might be a little less interactive with chat today, though, so... Uh, apologies.
attached now. Yeah, we did the first, last month we did the first episode of this, and we sculpted the face, the character's face. That's, st that episode's still available, it'll stay available here on the, on the channel, in the video section. You do have to be a subscriber though to see the, uh, videos. One of the one of the new one of the new perks. Uh, or you can catch these streams live. Like I said, last Sunday every month, live for free. some texture under this spike here. Spike is a bit wonky. It's a little tricky to do the spike, especially in a softer clay. Just have to have light, light touches. You see it's bending all over the place. It's okay. Get the texture on it that you want first and then bend it, just bend it back. Or if the spike's not working out for you, you can also just remove it. It's your world, you can do whatever you want. Let's continue with our rivets here. Tips by uh, Major. Major is uh, see, accidentally leaking the secrets to life.
A scratch right here. There we go. Good morning, Ayla Kiddo. You can make sure those rivets are pushed down while also adding that little bit of hammering technique onto the onto the surface of those. Making sure we don't leave any uh, fingerprints behind. Okay. Pretty good. Alright, I don't want to go too crazy with this helmet again. I want it to be kind of like a real simple, like almost like very low ranking guy in an army's bucket helmet kind of thing, you know. So n next next thing we're going to do is we're going to move on to the, um, the beard or what's going on around the helmet. Um, so probably normally I would say we put this in the oven and we bake it first and then we start sculpting the beard we might actually just do that how, how long so it took what it took us about an hour 19 minutes for the helmet hmm uh yeah you know what let's let's do it i mean this is tutorial you guys need to learn how how it's done right so i'm cutting corners here I was going to try and we could s still continue and sculpt the beard onto this, but the problem is, is now you have to be very careful not to touch the helmet. And it's going to be so much easier if we can grab the helmet, hold it upside down, and then sculpt the beard. Um, so, in, in my experience, I've learned that uh, with working with polymer clays, it's better to do more uh, layers split it up into as many layers as you can because it just makes life so much easier yeah. and we still might add more to the helmet uh, we can always add more but everything we have here going on right now looks good so so I guess bef let's, before we stick it in the oven let's do this I'm going to take a little loop tool here and I'm going to cut I'm gonna cut away the that understructure now that we're not pushing on it anymore. We're not sculpting up onto it. And this will let us sculpt and kind of put the hair underneath the edge of the helmet and create a really nice overlap. I also think we're going we are going to add I think some chain hanging from the the edge of the helmet here some really rustic looking chain material so we want to create a hole for that so let's put that hole like right about there I'm just gonna make a nice little spot for that Scooping the brains, that's right. What's up, Looper? Let's do that on the other side now. Right below the cheekbone here.
actually thinking about taking our tool here. Mm -mm. I'm going to take our tool under here. And let's fl let's flare these out a little bit more. Let's, now that we are done. Let's just push this out. So we can still keep all of our surface texture and detail. We're just kind of moving it. Moving it around there. There we go. Hey, welcome Unchained. How you doing? Thanks for jumping on in here, man, with your people. We are doing a tutorial uh, today. So come on in. We're sculpting character helmet and beard onto our face that we made last time. See a little fingerprint right there. We're going to get rid of that just by Touching it with the tool there. Make sure there's no more fingerprints. I think we look pre looking pretty good here. Now how may these hands be of service to you? Ruck, Ruck Row, thank you for the prime sub. I appreciate that. Thanks for supporting what I do. Okay, I think this looks good, ladies and gentlemen. Pretty happy with that. So we got our shape, we got our texture, our detail. Got everything prepped and ready. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this like that should stand in the oven just like that just fine we'll put this in for about probably uh yeah probably about 20 minutes we should do about 20 minutes and we're gonna do two 275 degrees fahrenheit for about 20 minutes and then we'll get we can pull that out if, and we can cool it off we can just Dose it under, douse it under water, so we can keep working. So, let's do that. Hey, I appreciate the compliments there, Unchained, and I appreciate the uh, the raid, man. Thanks for sending your people here. Um, not an art guy, but found this rather intriguing. Happy to support with my free money. Well, I, I appreciate it. That ends up as real money for me, so thank you very much. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so, uh, hmm. If you're watching the video of this, our tutorial uh, will continue in about 20 minutes on the head. I think we'll spend this time and demonstrate some other things. So, what we do in the other... Yeah, so we finished the helmet, or got it to a finished state. And we're going to bake it for 20 minutes. Lock that in, so that way we can work on the beard without having to worry about uh, dodging the helmet. So... Hmm. I was thinking maybe maybe we should uh, demonstrate uh, ears. Perhaps. Because we didn't have to show ears with this current head. So, yeah, you know what? Let's do that. Uh-oh. 
Yeah, that's good. Yeah, let's, um... I don't have a head. I don't have a head that needs ears right now, so we'll just sculpt an ear onto a head shape. Let's do that. I've been live for about an hour and 30 minutes already. All right, here we go. So let's let's create our general head shape. So, so ears is usually something I also do in this phase of sculpting. So we let's pretend like we have a head here that's fully sculpted, or the face is fully done, the face and the jawline. And now we're we're creating a character that we can see the ears on. Let's just create a rough head shape here. Front plane, top plane. I oh gotta get that jawline separation there. Kind of a generic skull shape, really. We pretend like the the face is finished. Let's see. Here. There we go. Finished face. Now what's what's important here is the jawline. So so the back of the jaw is actually usually right around the center of the head going this way. That's about the middle between the front of the face. And this is where the ear starts. Now the ear usually goes from the top of the eye. Is right around the, right around where the top of the ear is. And the bottom of the nose. So I know that's the mouth, but that bed probably be roughly where the nose is. Is usually where the bottom of the ear is. So you can see we've already created pretty much a general shape on where the ear should be and what size it should be, right? Just by knowing those few things. That's probably a little bit too big, but so what I usually do is I take a piece of clay like this. Just going to stick it there like that. Then we take the end of our tool here. We'll create the deepest part of the ear going into the side of the head there like that. Earlobe. The thing about ears is they're different. They're, the shape of them is very different depending on the person you're looking at. So you just gotta look at reference. A great piece of reference I had uh, kind of shows the basic forms of the uh, ear. I wonder, I wonder if I can pull those up for you. When you break it down into simple uh, terms Makes it so much easier to understand. Of course, if this is like an orc or an elf or something with pointy ears, you have to adjust.
Uh, let me see if I can find uh oh, let's say this here. I have a, I have a piece of reference which will kind of help you guys see the forms of the ear. Let's see if I saved it. Mm. I added. Perfect. Okay. Nine 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 pickle. Hey, thanks for the raid. Nine 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 pickle plus. <laughs> we're going. We're going over how to sculpt ears right now. This is this is tutorial day or demonstration day. All right, check it out here. Oh uh, wait, does this? I can't remember if this works or not. Nope. Nope. Sorry. I think it's is it this there we go okay so th this shows you um that the 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 shape of the ear is made up of these three shapes so you got this hook this is the shape they say a fishing hook you know so it's the shape of the fishing hook then you have this little y here then you have the little part that sticks out right there that's where the hole goes so and then you can See, it shows it f the ears from the side, too, and that they kind of, like, pull away from the head towards the top, and they hug up near the bottom, so. Mm-hmm. There we go. Reference like that is, is, if you, if you look, actively look and use stuff like that, that, that is definitely how you grow as a sculptor, or, or, or any, any sort of an artist, really, so. Okay, use your reference, ladies and gentlemen. So we're just gonna use that. I'm gonna follow the shapes that it that it gives us. Okay. Right in there. Pulls away from the head up towards the top there, like that. Let's grab a little. Really, I didn't know they did much sculpting untested. Yeah, I mean, any part of the body you could really just focus in on and practice. Um, every every feature of the face or the head is its own its own thing. You know, it's got all these little things you can learn to make things a lot easier and little rules. Oh, really? Wow.
There we go. That would be ear I'd be happy with it. You could keep pushing as far as you want, but I would take this ear and I would uh brush it with uh alcohol a little bit. Clean it up and then yeah, you're looking pretty good here. Then so you do the ears first and then you would sculpt the hair around the ears. So you know, then you would put in your you know, your beard and your if it has a beard or hair or whatever. Yes, yep, this will all be saved up on the uh in the video section. Something like that, you know. Looks beautiful, doesn't he? There we go. That is ears. A little snippet of ears. I made you ask yeah, us corn. Sculpture of corn. I don't know if you guys got a chance to see this piece finished up. This is a uh, giveaway we did last weekend it's all finished up ready to be painted it's a backer for, for neighbor Andy that looks cool I'm happy with that what's up Foxter rigged <laughs> Old doggo portrait. If you haven't seen it, looking pretty good. Yeah, I'm not going to go too crazy with uh, that there, Mr. Corn. <laughs> Fun idea, though. Man, our... I mean, the missus are going to have to mess up the camera settings. It seems things got a little wonky. Our Sadie Cam kept... Oh, yeah, look at that. It's frozen. I was just going to say, our, our Sadie Cam kept freezing today. I don't know what's going on with that. Well, we got about 10 minutes left. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I watched uh, every once in a while I'll go on like a binge and go watch like a bunch of the tested episodes just to see what they got going on there's always there's thing about this this type of uh and most most types of artwork but especially this one there's so many different 
techniques and tools and materials. It's a real, it's a real never ending, um, uh, learning, you know, you never, you're never done, never done learning and trying new things. So, and as you're learning and trying new things, certain things will just kind of stick with you longer than others, you know, so and that's how your style, your style ends up kind of naturally developing itself that way, so. It's difficult trying to get the other ear to match. Yes, it is. Yep. When you're trying to get the other ear to match, the best thing you can do is make sure it matches early on. Like when you just add the little piece of clay, make sure both those pieces of clay are in the right spot, you know? Because it's easy to make adjustments to the, the overall shape. And as long as it's the same amount of material there, it's really hard to make one ear bigger than the other, you know, so. So, you know, at the beginning, I mapped out where the ear should go. Then I added a little piece of clay. After you do that on both sides, make sure everything looks good then. And then continue to actually do the details of the ear. Because uh, it's super easy to adjust and fix at that point. It's when you get really into the ear that it becomes hard to... Uh, mess with it so mm. what else can we do what can we do ladies and gentlemen i don't really want to get into a, a project or nothing oh uh, you know what let me show you guys the viking character since it's a fairly similar uh character to what we're demonstrating here let me show you that real quick Camera froze again, man. That's not good. I wonder if it's a hardware or software issue. It's not happening to our face cam, so. There we go. Weird. Weird. That's streaming, man. It's an endless, endless flow of technical difficulties. Oh, yeah. Whoops. All right. Check it out here. So we just started, we started doing, we did the straps across the chest and we started doing the fur that he has across his shoulder there. There's a nice, nice different styled helmet with a beard. We'll be getting into the beard next on our, uh, On our tutorial piece, then we sculpted his um, his axe here. And we'll be sculpting a hand onto the axe and attaching it and then we're able to finish finish the piece pretty much we have to sculpt the arm, the armor. Um, yeah, that's not much, not much left after that. It'll pretty much be the the arm, the last arm in the armor is pretty much the last big part, and then 
Yeah. Base building and painting. Is there anything left to do at that point? So. Fairly happy with this piece so far. So I think for this head, what we did is I sculpted the face, just like I said. Um, and then when I sculpted the helmet and the head uh, and the beard, I did it after it was attached to the character to the character. So so we had the face finished. We attached it to the body, sculpted it in the neck. I think we baked it again at that point, locked it in place. Then I sculpted the beard and the helmet while it's on the body. And that lets me really kind of like make these pieces of beard really match up with the body and the, the flow of the rest of the piece. Because like this one, he's on the front of his ship, so we have a lot of wind coming in uh, this direction here. And uh, so we needed we needed the hair and everything to uh, uh, to represent that, so... Hmm. But I just started doing this part last year. Little fur here. Frozen again. What the heck, man? Let's go. I think it's been long enough. Let's go pull our head out of the oven and cool. We're gonna cool it off. I'm just gonna douse it under water, cool it off real quick. It's probably not fully baked, but it's baked enough that we're not gonna mess it up. I think I'm really benefited by the break I took from my movie books project because I've learned a lot about handling the material, working in stages, etc. Been thinking about it last week and I'm quite excited to start back. I have a good idea about how to go forward and make improvements on what I already have. There you go. That's good, Mr. Frightful. That's good. That's all I, uh, you need you need to, to to efficiently or effectively learn something. You need you know instruction and the studying phase, right? Where you're just like observing and absorbing. But then you need to put that into action, because like if you just do this, it, it, you're not learn, you're not really getting there. It's it doesn't really stick until you start putting it into action, and and then 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 it's in there, you know, then it's locked in. So, all right. Really? <laughs> Dreaming about angry C-Not Bush. Oh boy.
All right. <clears throat> so I just stuck it under cold water after I pulled it out of the oven. Uh, it, it, there's no negative consequence to doing that. But I typically only do that if I'm in a real in a rush or in a hurry. Um, so, which we are right now. Usually, it's with smaller pieces, you know. Okay, that was a good choice. Even though I did, I wanted to continue the tutorial. That I mean, that's part of it right there. I'll show you guys how how it's actually done. Hey, right. good. I would only cool them down with water if it's cost clay though or super scope original. Yeah, I mean I out of all the polymer clay I've tried using, uh I've done that before and it, it doesn't have any sort of doesn't like explode on you or crack or anything. Uh interesting. Okay. So we have our head here with helmet. Well, the water was just to cool it down. So, so we sculpted this part at the beginning here of the tutorial. This helmet we put onto our head here. And then now I want to do the beard beard and hair and all that fun stuff so I just pulled it out of the oven stuck it under some water it's still actually a little bit warm I feel it I feel that it's a little bit warm still but it's cooled off enough that uh that we can keep sculpting so all right uh, let's go let's continue halfway there uh what Hold on one second. <laughs> Forgot to remove something. Let's go here. I think it's here. Oh, that's weird. Where did that come from? Randall echoes in the distance. <laughs> Randall trying to summon us back. That's sweet. I didn't even have that on. Uh... Well, I don't know where it is. I'll have to, have to hunt that down later. It's funny. Okay, back to work. No, there's no there's no negative like consequence for sculpting and baking in phases multiple times. Alright, there we go. Get our focus in on there. Okay, so we're gonna be sculpting the beard next. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of mount this from the backside here. There we go. That way it's out of the way. Oh, let me pull up my reference here. some of our clay glue just gonna put it around the chin and then we'll use the brush to move it in closer to the face here it's a brush get it anywhere we're adding new clay get 
that mustache area covered. Alright, we're going to use the Cosclay Soft for the beard. First step is to add on mass. Start with the front of the chin here. And remember, this is the time when we have to decide kind of the flow of the character's head. If there's any wind in the scene or any movement. Which is hard. It's hard to really decide that when it's just a head, but you have to make a decision. Something that you're going to stick with. Alright, let's add a little bit of material for the moustache here. goes into our beard. Parts of the, the side of the beard here. So go tucked under our helmet there. This is the part where if your character has long hair, it kind of merges in with the long hair. side here. All right, now, I think I want to do one of those large, like, big braids in, in the beard at the bottom there. I think so. Just shaping up the mustache here. See, we're working with just shapes until we get the shape right and then we'll add in the lines you know add in those hairs i think 
think we add like a large braid coming out of the front here like this. Maybe with some sort of a Go in this direction, maybe. A lot like Santa. Armored Santa. <laughs> Ready for battle. Okay. Now we could carve the braid into there, or do we, or we could actually braid some clay. Uh, that's the that's the question right there. It's probably gonna be easier to just braid some clay. So okay, let's let's remove this. Now that we know what we want to do. Sometimes you just gotta slap around bodies of clay until you know what you're actually going for. And then and then you gotta decide, okay, what's the best what's the best approach for this? Okay. Set him down. Gonna make those braids. Now we'll do this out of the firmer. It's it's gonna be easier to do this out of a firmer clay. So if you have a firmer, the option, now's the time to switch to that for this part. That's pretty good. About that thickness. I don't think that's too thick. Maybe a little bit thinner. It's always thinner than you think that you need to go for each one of these. Beard braid. Yeah, we're doing a big, big beard braid. A lot larger one in the front. So we need to make three of these. Roughly the same size and length, and I'm, I'm making them so they get skinnier towards the end, just like hair would be, you know. Thicker towards the the top and, and skinnier as it goes down. Right now, this is this is the new step I've added. So instead of braiding it and then attaching it and then trying to texture it to look like hair while it's attached, we're gonna texture each one of these uh, components of clay here with our just like a wire brush, or we could use our uh, our V2 here. I'll probably use that so it creates less debris. This is this is the V2. It's a custom made tool to do hair texture that doesn't create a lot of clay boogers, you know. If you've ever taken a wire brush to clay, you realize it creates some nice texture, but then it usually leaves behind all these little bits of clay everywhere that you don't want. So this it's like that wire brush it just reduces the clay boogers. So we're just gonna take it and we're just going to go like this. This gives us some some texture. So it's not just flat. There we 
we go. Clay boogers, yeah. It's a, it's a real thing. Now we take these and we're going to actually braid them. So if you've never braided anything before, well, now's the time. Now's the time to learn. Take the three, stick them together at the top here with the thicker parts at the top, and we're just going to take this one and bring it over the middle piece, and then the opposite over the middle piece, and yeah, that's it. That's how you braid. Over the middle, over the middle. These putties have been actually around for a, a little while, actually. Made by Mr. Stefan. I have some of it here. It's good stuff. It's very, uh... It's very good at doing really small things very effectively. It's a very firm type of clay. It's got like a... It's really close to a waxy type feel to it which makes it really nice for doing tiny details and uh, even has some flexibility to it as well there we go now we tighten it up a little bit there and I'll probably remove this part here the top and we're gonna add Gonna add that to our guy here. Probably a little bit, a little bit too long. Let's uh, take away a few of those braids. Probably like right here. Just gonna put that into position like that. And then now we can blend it in with the rest of the beard. At this point too, we'll wanna add some sort of a tie or something at the bottom there holding it all together. Since this is like a dwarf like character, we'll add some sort of like golden uh, little clamped on golden bracket thing there.
Let's add on that little bracket now, because it's only going to get harder to do the further we get along here. So I'm just going to take a flat piece of clay and wrap it around. extra Again, the positioning of this I want to keep in mind that there will be a body under this character eventually so we don't want it to go into the body of the character have a little bit of little bit of movement on it you know swaying off here to the side here and one thing we can do too is at the end of this beard let's actually make this let's make this clamp a little bit more than what it is a little bit boring right now so Really? I saw a study that uh, having a beard is uh, its like wearing two masks or three extra protection. <laughs> All of a sudden the stream goes offline. Its content has been removed. Fact checked. <laughs> Oops. All right, so now we're gonna create some hair coming out of the bottom of this, a little bit more than what's there. So we're just gonna, gonna take a little, piece of clay. up captain so far so good man it's tutorial day all right flat piece of clay about that shape and we're going to take this tool and we're going to I'm gonna add in some hairs just like this I'm cutting all almost all the way through pretty much all the way through by the time I get to the end Dividing that piece up into a bunch of individual strands. Like that. Okay, now we take this and we're just going to we're gonna roll it in on itself. Like that. And then start pinching the ends together. Create our little, give a little twist, some interest there. 
a little curl at the end. And there we go. Now we take this piece that we just made and we're going to attach it here. lines back in there. There we go. Much better. I'm your inspiration. Yeah, you gotta get past the. There's there's two phases of growing a beard. You have to get past the ugly fa the ugly duckling phase, where it just isn't long and it isn't short. And it's just in between phase that doesn't look so good. And then the 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 itchy phase. Definitely get yourself some nice uh, beard oil or some so, some sort of product like that. And uh, yeah. You can get past itchy phases. That's that's the point where your beard gr starts growing back into itself, you know, because it grows out far enough and then starts curling around and starts poking you back in the face. I tell you though, once it gets to a certain length, you just it, it's gone, no longer, no longer an issue. And the only time I ever have itchy beard is when uh, like it's just been a while since I've put some beard oil in there. You just put some in and you're good to go. All right. This guy's well past the itchy phase. <laughs> okay, so now we have our braid. Now we can do the rest of the beard. Let's start with the mustache here. So we're just going to go in and we're going to create some lines here. I'm going to use the sharp end of this to get in there. go you want to do full lines all the way from the base all the way to the end and you want to get them as close as you can next to each other and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start controlling each little hair here you kind of a lot of hair texture and hair pattern is you, you start with a uniform pattern and then you go back in and you and you break up that uniformness to create something uh, that looks good. So we started with just those lines and then we're going to go in and correcting and altering so I get something I'm happy with.
Let's go upside down to do the other side. The reason I'm going upside down is so this this side, my natural tool stroke is like that, right? But this side, you're you're doing a weird. You have to use a completely different motion to get the same thing. So if you turn it upside down, you can now use a more natural tool stroke. That's if you're right-handed. It'll be opposite for you if you're uh, left-handed. Take this side again here. Just gonna start pulling out the mustache. The head and the helmet have been baked. Yep. The only thing not baked right now is the the facial hair. Okay, so now I'm going to start I'm going to come in on the side of the beard here. See, I've already I've already blended the clay to the to the point where it reaches the face uh, really subtly, you know, so there's not a big steep drop off here, you know, it, it kind of blends into the side of the face there. But there's a there's a definitive line. So we're going to start. We're going to start here at the bottom of the beard. We're just going to use squiggly lines and we're going to start carving in these Squiggly lines. So I'm twisting the tool like this as I move it. Like this. Bring it back up. How many times can you rebake it? Uh, as many times as you want, actually. The creator of the clay tested it up to 30 times with no, no uh, sign of any negative consequences. So. All right. Next layer. And I'm going really deep here. Let me do this here. Now this will be uploaded with with sound. The uh, the music we're using today is uh, music that doesn't get muted. So it will indeed be uploaded for full video. Yeah. Now this last one I did a little bit more straight because I'm just trying to create. This is the part that meets up with the face. I'm just trying to create a nice smooth transition there, so. Now you can decide at this point if the beard is curly enough, which I think it is here, it's wavy enough. You never want to, oh, okay. Some people do like straight, really straight beards, but I mean, I, I have a beard, I know how it is. The hair is never straight, unless you like, unless you use like a straightener. And you can straighten your beard, but I don't think our, our rustic dwarf here uses a straightener. So, so we want to create a lot of curls and waviness to beard hair. Um, but say we wanted more curls and waviness, 
me show let me demonstrate i like how that looks here so i don't want to mess that up but let's say here this is just another jawline so let's do our our squiggly lines here Let's say we wanted that to be more curly. You take a ball tip tool like this. You're gonna push in between each and in, in between those deeper lines here. And create like a, it makes the hair look more curly. Um, and then go back in this tool and really define it's really it's it's coming out with a general technique to kind of create your base shape and then you go back in and you really need to describe what actually is going on there and at this point you take it as far as you want you know like you can be really detailed with it or really not detailed this just kind of helps get things going Oh, headphones are dying. Oh, camera's frozen again. Jeez. I gotta figure out what's going on with that camera. Could be that I, I did download a game this weekend that uh, took up a lot of space. Maybe it's a computer side issue. I hope so. But it's not the actual uh, camera. What are you guys doing? That's because it's normally the time when we would end. We're almost done, alright? You have to wait. Yeah. You have to wait. Okay. Okay, but I like how that looks, so we don't need to we don't need to alter that anymore. Let's do the other side of the face. The beard is broken up into different sections. You have this front part of the beard where the mustache is and then there's a side part and that blends up into the sideburns so, so let's do the other side part here again we're gonna go upside down here and we want it to go you know we want it to go this way just guidelines there for me
Alright. Now we have to address the center of the beard here. We have to make everything meet up with the braid. So I'm going to define that lip line first. Now those lines are straighter because it's being pulled into position by the, the braid. So making these ones go straighter to a certain point. A hundred percent? Oh jeez. Yeah, I use ninety-nine point nine percent. You can use lower percentages though. It doesn't have to be that crazy. Alright. Now let's flare this edge out here. There we go. It's a nice smooth transition. Ah, yeah. True. Just dilute it yourself. back some of this texture here. Now, how may these hands be of service to you? What's up, Spawn Chiller? Hey, man, thanks for the 22 months of support. I appreciate it, brother. Thanks for sticking with me, man. Support my uh, craft and my family. Get a thicker chunk at the end, you can just grab it, pinch it, and pull it, and it'll taper off into a nice little piece of hair there. Alright, here we go. Now we do the lip line.
problem pe I think I see a lot of people run into with beards is they're afraid to go really deep and they, they create a nice shape of a beard but then when they go to do the texture they're really light you know they don't want to mess it up the hair has a lot of depth a lot of big areas that just go in really far you know so you have to really kind of push yourself to really not be afraid to really create some deep areas of separation you know those little spots where you can see through the hair you know That's the part where making one of a kind pieces uh, excel because you can't really mold and cast or reproduce uh, something that has that much depth. That's why if you ever look at beards and hair on something that's uh, reproduced, it tends to be pretty flat. Alright, I think we've done it. All right, let's call that a wrap there, ladies and gentlemen. That is a tutorial on how to do helmet and beard to our character that we sculpted before. The next step for this would just be to, uh, you know, pretty much just keep pushing it until it's at a place that you uh, are happy with. Um, sometimes it's it's good if you set if you set up something like this down. Don't don't stick it in the oven right away set it down get up go do something else for a while and come back and sit down and you'll see a few things that you didn't see before to change or to fix and then bake it after that so so we'll probably do that we'll uh we'll set it down here um but yeah that's pretty that's pretty much finished next step here would be to create this guy a body so some sort of dwarf like character I don't really have a game plan for him or a purpose but I'm sure we'll make something useful out of this this little mustache here could use some work on this side here. yeah yep I'm pretty happy with that um, I don't know what our next uh, demonstration will be We'll have to come up with something just use the same technique for the hair at the back well okay so if you're putting hair on the back don't don't do it yet so that would definitely be something you want to actually uh, attach the head to the body sculpt in the neck and then once it's completely attached then you can add in the hair if if he has if the character has longer hair so 
Um, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll get into something like uh, there's all kinds of avenues we can go from here. We could either continue this uh, project. Maybe we'll do it like that way since a lot of you guys are following along. Let's let's just demonstrate whatever the next step to create this into a finished character is. So it'll probably be um, uh, creating a, a torso or a, something like that. So I had Otter Cat. I had a really really awesome uh, Thanksgiving. It was Emma's Emma's first Thanksgiving. She had a she had a feast. It was awesome. But uh, yeah, so let's call let's call it a wrap there, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining the second ever Cnot Bush tutorial stream. I'll figure out what we're doing on the next one and let you guys know. But it'll happen. The next one will be scheduled for next month at the end of the month. The last it'll be the last Sunday of every month, right around this time. And again, if you can't catch it live. You can watch it for free live here, but if you want to watch the VOD, you have to be a subscriber. That's kind of one of our sub perks is, uh, you know, access to all those tutorial VODs that we make. So, um, but other than that, I'll be back on Monday. We'll be working on our dragon, our giant uh, Death Knight dragon. I think we were, where did we leave off on that one? Oh yeah, we're sculpting the, the saddle here. The saddle for the dragon and 